Hi, this is Sheshadri Kulkarni. I am going to present the summary of the chapter Martin Luther King by R. N. Roy. Friends, as many of us know, Martin Luther King was one of the great personality the world has seen. He fought for the justice, equality, and freedom of the blacks. He raised the wise against the discrimination and slavery of the blacks in America. In many ways, he is similar to Mahatma Gandhi as both belong to 20th century and it is the century which has seen more cruelty than any other century in the history of the world. Both fought for the cause of the suppressed one, Gandhiji for the rights of the untouchables, also called as Harijans and Luther King for the rights of American blacks. Both were the peaceful warriors, fought with the weapon of non-violence against the powers that were full of weapons and both were assassinated. King was raised in a church. He believed in the equality of the men and denied the racial discrimination which was going around him. Blacks had done more than their share in building America. They had done hard work, dirty work and even dangerous works in the mines, on the docks and in the blistering foundries. Friends, here dock means... uh, an enclosed area of water in a port for the loading, unloading and repair of ships. Blistering means extremely hot and blistering foundries means factories in which or factories which is unbearably hot and uncomfortable. And blacks had fought bravely and sacrificed their lives to defend America's honors and prestige in times of external peril. Here, again the peril means Uh, serious and immediate danger. King said that no person can truly exist half slave and half free. Blacks were deprived of normal education and normal social support or opportunities. They were not allowed in a school or public amusement parks meant for whites. And serving the food to blacks was also considered violation of law in the society. Here, author says that black was nobody in his own land. A parallel situation prevailed in India that is untouchability. Gandhiji fought for the untouchables in India and the another evil that India was facing was the British rule. Gandhiji fought with the policy of ahimsa that is non-violence against the British. At last, the British rule ended in India. As a young boy, Martin Luther King was highly inspired by Mahatma Gandhiji and he was inspired by his living Indian example to set right the wrong things going around him. King said, I am quoting as it is, before this century virtually all revolutions had been based on hope and hate. The hope was expressed in the rising expectation of freedom and justice. The hate was an expression of bitterness towards the perpetrators of the old order. It was the hate that made the revolution bloody and violent. What was new about Mahatma Gandhi's movement in India was that he mounted a revolution on hope and love, hope and non-violence. Now coming back again, for about 350 years, 20 million blacks silently weeped. King also said that we have waited for more than 340 years for our constitutional and God-given rights. The nations of Asia are moving with jet-like speed towards gaining political independence. But still we creep at horse and buggy pace towards gaining a cup of coffee at a lunch counter. And those who criticized him of his impatience, he replied that they had never felt the stinging dart of segregation. King came to national attention in 1956 when he led a boycott of the public buses in Montgomery to protest against the segregated seating on them. Segregate means separate. After facing many difficulties, this boycott became successful. The US Supreme Court ruled that the racial segregation on public conveyances both intrastate and interstate was unlawful. For a number of years, the Negro passengers on the city bus lines of Montgomery 
have been humiliated, intimidated, and faced threats on this bus line. Just the other day, uh, one of the fine citizens of our community, Mrs. Rosa Parks, was arrested because she refused to give up her seat for a white passenger. Mrs. Rosa Parks was arrested and taken down to jail, taken from the bus, just because she refused to give up her seat. At present, we are in the midst of a protest, the Negro citizens of Montgomery, representing some 44% uh, of the population. 90% at least of the regular Negro bus passengers are staying off the buses, and we plan to continue until something is done. The Montgomery victory had taught the blacks the power of organization, superiority of moral force over physical force, the dignity of suffering for noble cause and the efficacy of non-violence. In January 1957, King organized the Southern Christian Leadership Conference which expanded his field of activity and gave him a national platform. He moved from place to place, gave lectures, met with leaders and discussed about the problems with them. King became a powerful speaker. Through these fiery speeches, King was able to generate the power which influenced the entire race. He delivered the most impressive speech of his career in 1963 when around 2,50,000 Americans of all faith, race, creeds, etc. assembled together to march on Washington. The main theme of the speech was I have a dream. And tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. King's career extended from 1957 to 1968. He fought with non-violence weapon. He said this weapon cuts without wounding and ennobles the man who wields it. It is a sword that heals. Friends here, ennoble means give a noble rank or title. King raised a vast army. Uh, I am telling about this army as it is quoted in the chapter. This army. But it was a special army with no supplies but sincerity. No uniform but its determination. No arsenal except its faith. No currency but its consigns. It was an army that would move but not maul. It was an army that would flank but not falter. It was an army to storm bastions of hatred, to lay siege to the fortress of segregation, to surround symbols of discrimination. It was an army to whose allegiance was to God and whose strategy and intelligence were the eloquently simple dictates of conscience. Friends, blacks suffered a lot in this fight. King was awarded Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. In 1967, King opposed the Vietnam War. On April 4, 1968, he was assassinated. Martin Luther King wrote the book Why We Can't Wait and dedicated this to his children. So friends, this was the summary of the Martin Luther King by R.N. Roy. I hope this was helpful. Do like, share and subscribe the channel. Thank you.